let me bring in our reviewer this morning, who is Chloe Hurst. Morning, Chloe. Good morning. Let's talk about your stories this morning, which have uh, an ecological, a natural kind of theme to them. I did notice in uh, on social media over the last week, um, some organisations in Cornwall advertising puffin tours and puffin watching, as it is coming up to that time of year uh, where people might start seeing puffins in Cornwall and around Great Britain and on the Isle of Man, um, because we have a small population of puffins in the UK. I think it's around 10%. Um, They primarily live out at sea in the Atlantic and they only come to land to nest. And they actually nest in underground burrows like many other seabirds, which um, people might be surprised to hear. Mm. They do um, breed in colonies. Their success is in numbers. So it's really important that we continue to provide um, protected habitat for them, especially now as they are red listed, which means that they're of the highest conservation concern. Now, on the Carver Man, they were extinct in the 1980s due to a number of different historical reasons. So it decimated the population basically here on the island. But now, like many other species, they face a new threat, so climate change. So with sea surface temperatures increasing and overfishing, their main source of food in the British Isles, in Cornwall and here, are sand eels. Now, sand eels play a really important part in our marine ecosystem because they are primary food source for many nesting seabirds, like orcs and kittiwakes, and they're declining rapidly. And if things continue, sadly, the British Trust for Ornithology have published that within the next 30 years, we may not have puffins oh. anymore. Oh, no, no. I mean, they are just the wonderful, wonderful oh, little they characters, are. aren't they? They are, they really are. And I've not seen one ever. So I'm hoping that this year I may be in luck. And I do have a positive news story for you, that the return of puffins to the calf of man was recorded for the first time in more than 30 years last year. And that was thanks to a decoy puffin project, which was run by the Manx Wildlife Trust. And it's been one of my jobs over the last three weeks here on the island. And we've put up plastic decoy puffins all over the cliffs. (laughs) And they're attached with a, a sound system that plays puffin calls out to the sea. And yes, I am going to do a puffin impression for you today, James. If oh, you'd like to I'd love it. Go on, go for it. Give me your best puffin impression. So from dawn to dusk, all we can hear is... That's basically a puffin call. And it's really funny because it's, it's sort of quite unexpected. Um, but they're all out on the cliffs. We're um, hoping that puffins will return this year and hopefully even breed. And what's even better than watching the puffins is actually watching all the guests and the visitors on the island thinking that the plastic puffins are, of course, the real puffins, um, taking selfies. And we even had someone last year do a proper commando crawl right up to one, (laughs) getting really close, thinking it was real. But it was only a plastic puffin. So um, I'm excited to have a look at what what the public will be doing this year with them. (laughs) That person must have thought, crikey, this one's timid. (laughs) <laughs> Not the slight. You're gonna have to do that again for me. So how does a puffin sound? Oh. I feel like you should end that with the word matron. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for bringing the sound of the puffin and your very brilliant <laughs> impression of it to the bbc radio cornwall airwaves we will catch up with you again if that's all right and hear how yeah, things are going absolutely. thank you so much and enjoy your weekend and enjoy your shower as well thank you yes <laughs> you're, you're gonna you love that <laughs> <laughs> that there with me this morning with the review from the calf of man that little island south of the main isle of man chloe hurst he's there for eight months originally from Falmouth, but there for eight months to help the Manx Wildlife Trust.